happy to, to modify it. So good evening and welcome. Um, I'm so happy to have you join me in this first ever series that I'm, I'm dubbing Ask Alana About. Um, and so welcome and, and thank you so much for participating in this experience with me. So for tonight, what I would like to do is just kind of go down a little bit of an agenda, um, a little bit of explanation of how this is going to be hosted, and then we will go from there, okay? So um, first, if you, as you come in, as you can see that I have a little chat area, so I turned off people's video and microphones. It's just to help me so that I don't get distracted, but if you could please leave your comments in the chat window. So if you click on the little icon on the bottom, it should say chat. And then if you can just have that area for questions for me, instead of comments or talking to each other, that will also help me stay um, focused and stay on point. So if you are having issues with the video portion, um, it may be the internet connection part, but I am recording this session so that when it's done, I will show you where you can find the recorded version once it's uploaded. And then you can go back and see anything that maybe wasn't um, clear or, or in focus, okay? Because I know it can be hard um, when different people have different internet settings for, for all of that to, to work well together. So I will um, make sure that there is a copy for everyone to, to see. Now also in, in this, Space that I'm creating, I just want people to know that everybody is welcome. And so what I mean by that is that we're going to have people that are beginners, people that are expert spinners, people that have never spun yarn. So really my, my goal and my purpose of, of doing this is that I want to be able to teach people and educate people and inspire people. And so wherever you're coming from, I want you to know that you're welcome in, in this space with me and that I promise that each person is going to get something from it, okay? Now, you might do some of the things that I do as far as technology, um, but spinning skill-wise, you may not necessarily do what I do. Now, you might have the same spinning skill set as me, but organizationally, it might be different. So how this is going to be different than a workshop is that I'm going to be sharing with you my personal process, and I, and I hope that in doing so, you can either ask me questions about it, um, and we can have a dialogue and a, and a conversation about what it is that I'm doing, why I'm doing it, but, but also um, that it will try, I, I, I'm hoping that I can like change the way that you think about um, doing a, a craft like spinning or knitting, and that it doesn't necessarily have to be you know, following a pattern and, and doing everything by the books. I want to show you how you can really approach this from an artistic perspective and that, you know, it's, it's more than just picking a kit that um, a designer, you know, curated with a yarn dyer and, and going through the process, but really we can approach spinning and um, fiber arts really as, a, as, a, as an art form and, and celebrate it in that, in that capacity. So I'm going to um, start off by going through the agenda that I have, okay? So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how I curate um, an inspiration board and how I put together things that um, basically will one day turn into a project. Then I'm going to show you how I organize my thoughts doing that, okay? Then the next, portion is going to be for picking a project. So how, how do I do that? And if I don't necessarily get to um, all, all of these components in, in this week's video, then I will just continue and resume in, in two weeks. So that will be um, June 2nd at 8 p.m. So again, if I don't get through everything that I was hoping to in session one, I will continue in, in two weeks. Then I want to also talk to you about um, how you can use resources such as Ravelry, Instagram, and also photo editing software to kind of like um, better get a sense of how your project is gonna look at the end or what you're working on at the end. Because I know a lot of different spinners work differently. So some people will go 
and they'll see a beautiful braid of fiber, get all excited by it, sit down and, and spin it, and not really consider um, what is going to be. So as far as an artist goes, my, my personal process is to start with a project in mind. However, just like most of you, when I see something pretty, I want to buy it, right? I want to take it home, I want to cut it, I want to look at it, I want to squish it. So, so the idea is that um, I want to have a place where when I see things that I like, I don't necessarily impulse buy them. And, and I can buy things more for a specific purpose. I feel like it just makes it easier when I'm envisioning an end goal, right? So if I'm envisioning that on this journey of this Ask Alana About, that we're going to Disney World, I want to make sure that we're going to make it to Disney World. Now, how we get there, everyone can get there different, right? We can go the scenic route, we can stop at a few yarn stores on the way, maybe we can hit up a couple of bakeries, you know, someone can take a train there, someone can take a plane there, so we kind of have this destination, and, and how we get there is going to look vastly different. So I'm basically saying, come hop on, hop on in, into my artistic car, um, be my passenger for a bit, I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey, and if you have questions along the way, like, why are we stopping at the fifth yarn store? I mean, if you're in my passenger seat, you're probably not asking me that, but if you have any other questions similar to that, feel free, like I said, to put it in the, the chat window, and um, I'll, I'll check that periodically to check in. So we're going to go until 8.40, um, and then at the end, I do have a little bit of a survey. If you could complete that, I would really appreciate it just moving forward so I can make this the best experience possible. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing I said um, that I'd like to focus on tonight is how do I curate my ideas so that it's not all over the place, right? Like a lot of people will say to me that um, I'm a very organized person, you know, that I have a very um, good way of organizing my ideas and, and putting them together. And really the reason for it is that in my brain, I have like a thousand tabs open, okay? And so it's constantly jumping around from one idea to the next, and I have a very difficult time focusing. And so the more organized I can be with my thoughts and have places to dump them quickly, I feel like the better I, I am um, when it comes to, to executing those ideas. So it's just like a grocery list, right? I know throughout the day that there's things that I need to buy, okay? I know, especially now, right? When we go to the grocery store, if it's a two-week trip, you, you better make sure you know what you're getting if you're not, if you're not gonna go back out again. So I try to have a place where I can put this. Now, as an artist, I, you know, I couldn't have little sticky notes and, and keep track of things, but I might see something, you know, when I'm looking on Instagram, or, you know, I might go to a fiber festival and see a vendor that has beautiful things, and I don't necessarily wanna buy it, buy it right then and there, but I wanna have a place where I can keep all of that, okay? So I'm gonna see if the technology is working for me. Hopefully you can see my website. And so I'm gonna start off over here. So you can see that I actually um, practice what, what I preach. Now I'm just gonna close this window and move it up a bit so you can see. All right, so what I've done is I created a Google um, spreadsheet and I've taken all of these fibers that I've seen from other dyers and I've placed them in this, um, the, in this space, right? So when, when I did that, you can see that there are tabs on the bottom. And so this section, I'm referring it to as my fiber reference page. Now, what I do is as I'm seeing things that I like, so Mary, um, from, from Kamash Fiber Arts, she was doing these gorgeous bats over here, and I love them, okay? Now, I love the colors, they're totally my thing, um, but I didn't really know um, what, what I would do with them, okay? So I didn't wanna just impulse buy them and, and not have a plan in place. So what I decided to do was to just copy the picture and paste it in this Excel spreadsheet. So, on my website, I have um, this course that's called um, Creating a Digital Dying Notebook. And I've kind of modified it so that now I can apply the thinking behind that workshop to other projects, like spinning projects and naming projects. So I'm gonna switch back so that we can look at this a little bit more. And if you're not familiar with you know, um, Excel or using spreadsheets, that's okay. 
I'm just, again, talking to you a little bit about my process. But if you have a question, like I said, you can just put it into the chat window and I'm happy to answer it. So what, I, what I've done is that not only did I copy this bat that, that Mary put together, but if I click over here and then I click on this part here, you'll see that it'll open up a link. Fingers crossed. Is it going to do it? Hopefully it should open it up to, there we go. Okay. So you can see, right, it, it opened it up to the picture. Um, of course, it's loading. But the idea is that if I have um, people's websites and, and links next to the fiber, it's, it's going to help me figure out, you know, who the vendor was if I want to go back and buy more. But I can also say, oh, hey, remember when you had that bat or that comb top in, in that colorway? Could you could you please um, you know do do this again? Or I need it in this quantity, right? So I'm kind of buying and I'm kind of purchasing, but I'm not doing it with real money. I'm just kind of curating and collecting all of these ideas. Now, if you notice, okay, so I'm going to switch back so you can see. Okay, no problem. So um, for the captions on the spreadsheet, let me go to my window here. Okay. So yeah, so basically what it, it says, like I put the name of the, the vendor down. So I know Mary from Kamaj Fiber Arts, that's her name. And then I linked it. So I show how to do this in um, that digital, like how to create a digital dying notebook. But this is just a way that I'm applying it to um, fiber. So for example, here, um, Fat Cat Knits, Janisha does awesome stuff. I, I took this picture from her Etsy shop and I saved it, okay? And then I made a link so that I can click on it so I know exactly which vendor did I get those, those fibers from. Now also, if you notice, they're kind of like all different colors and, and, and fibers and vendors, but they have a similar palette, a similar theme. So what I've done over here is I've created almost like a little um, color swatch chart for the project so that it has the, the hex color code. So for those of you not familiar, um, that's basically just the, the number that is assigned to a color for web designers, graphic designers to, to use. Um, and then for myself, I also put the Pantone color down here. So this is just a way that I keep a digital notebook, if you will, of, of my ideas. And then once, once I have you know, something like this together, um, now I could say, okay, you know, I like this color palette. These are things that are really appealing to me. I wonder what would look good using these colors. So that's kind of how, how I start. Okay, hang on, let me get to this panel here. Okay. So another thing is that, and I'll, I'll go to this, this camera here so you can see. Um, I have this shawl, so it's called the, the Lost in Time shawl, and I have it on my my Instagram page, um, photograph better so you can, you can see the details better. But what I love about it is that um, some of the yarns are hand spun. So like I took a workshop with um, Plucky Fluff with Lexi Boger and I have that yarn right here. And then I have some commercial yarns, I have some hand spun yarns. So when I was just making yarns for the fun of it, um, not really having any use in mind, obviously I have, I have tons of those, right? And, and what I did was I tried to find a pattern that would work for using multiple color yarns. So I'll switch to see here if I can show you better, right? So it's just a whole bunch of different colors. And it's got different textures. And so I really wanted to create um, a project, my next project, that it's not going to, um, you know, leave me bored. I really, I really want to be excited through the whole process, right? I don't want to just sit down and spin a bag of brown wool and then do stockinette for 600 stitches and a thousand rows, you know. Um, I want to do something that as an artist, it's, it's going to stimulate me and, and get me excited about, you know, creating, creating this piece. So I'm going to just go back here so you can see um, in my book. So what I've done um, is I've looked up different different patterns, and the one the one that I'm getting really um, excited about seeing is the Stephen West Fanta Stitch one. 
So just so you can see like over here, um, you know, it's, it's really colorful and it has a ton of different stitches in it. And so I thought for hand spun, that would be super neat as a way of um, just not getting bored. And I, I really had a lot of fun doing all of um, the previous Stephen West patterns. And I'm not really um, a shawl wearer, right? But I really enjoy wearing them. And now that my son um, is a hockey player, and I go to the ice rink, now I have a reason to wear these shawls. So I'm kind of getting um, excited about creating shawls, but Stephen West's really lend themselves to different colors and textures so that in the creation of the knitting part, I'm not getting bored. Okay, so going back to my, um, my screen here. So let me go back. So, so now I have all of the colors, right? So one thing that I've done that I find super helpful is I like to go on Ravelry. So this is one of the resources that I like to use. And if you've never used Ravelry in this way, um, maybe it'll be something that you can put in your toolbox. But I will go to the pattern, so I'm under Fantastitch, Stitch, and then under Filter, you can type in the words hand spun. And so now I can see projects that other spinners have, have used, um, but specifically specifically with hand spun. Now, if nothing really is appealing to me, I can, I can go back and look at ones that commercial yarns are used. So this one is kind of speaking to me. Um, but the idea that I'm looking at what other people have done and I'm saying, okay, how did they apply the colors? So as an artist, I tend to do what I refer refer to as um, backwards design. So let me go back to the, okay. So I, I refer to it as a backwards design, right? I like to start with a pattern and then try to figure out, okay, how can I get the yarns that I use, whether they're commercial yarns or hand spun yarns, how can I get them to suit this project, right? So it's like, if I start with the recipe and I know that I wanna make chicken and dumplings, you know, I can go to Google, I start with a recipe that has the most reviews, right, the, 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 the best ratings, and then I kind of work backwards, as opposed to going to the store, seeing a really great rotisserie chicken, because you know, when you walk past and it like smells really good, they always get me with that. I just buy the rotisserie chicken, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with it, you know? But if I started with the rotisserie chicken, it might take me a while to figure out that chicken and dumplings is a route that I can go. But if I started with a recipe that said, use pre-cooked chicken and I wanna save some time, you know, then, then the two can come together. So I feel like starting with a project can really help you um, in allowing the creativity part to kind of bubble up more to the surface. And so it does take a little bit more time in the beginning for me, but I think that's the part that I enjoy the most, right? I enjoy trying to see what did other people do that I like what did other people do that I don't like? Um, and so I'm not trying to be judgmental or, or um, critical here, but let me just go back so that we can see. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this window. So like I said, I really like this pattern, but you know, there are some of them that maybe I just would not wear, okay? So like this one over here, I'm not somebody that likes the color pink and purple. And so I might, you know, spin a yarn that, um, comes from fiber with those colors because it might be fun to, to spin. But for me personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily um, wear, wear those colors. So now that I kind of have a sense of, okay, I have a pattern, but let me see how did people do it like that, that I like, right? Now, I already know what colors I want to use. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a, um, a, a tip here. I don't know if you use um, technology as far as your, your fiber creating portion of, of the, the project, but I'm going to try to see if I can switch now to show you. So what I like to do, I'm going to go to the, um, the webcam for a second. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to take a picture from Ravelry, Instagram, wherever, wherever um, I've been searching for things and, and find what I like. And then what I'll do is over here. I hope it's going to show up. Okay. So I found someone that that did this awesome um, fantasy stitch pattern. 
And I turned it into black and white mode. So if you can't see because of the, the reflection and the glare, um, I don't know how to get it to like show up digitally like that. Maybe I can see if I can go to, to the screen here. Um, give me one second. Okay. I have this somewhat planned out so that you can see it better. Okay. So I'm going to go over here. See, that's why I like this because I, um, I have the link for it so I can show you better. Okay. So yeah, so see over here, this person, so shout out to Christina's Mid Journal. I didn't ask her for permission to, to um, use this picture, but it's, it's more that um, I grabbed it because when black and white mode, and then I thought this is perfect because now I can take it and I can digitally draw over it and modify it so that it has the colors that I want to use instead of the colors that the designer is talking about. So yeah, Christy, right? So um, a pattern can have colors in it that the designer liked and you may not. Um, so um, for, for those that didn't see the, the, the chat, Christy said that it amazes me how the color in a pattern will influence whether or not I use it. And so sometimes just having a little bit of an accent in a color can really um, be the thing that sets the whole piece off, right? So when I was looking at this, I thought, I love this, I love this shawl pattern. It's not, it's not going to be boring as far as the new portion. To spin for it, it seems like it'll be fun. But I noticed this part over here. Okay, so let me see if I can make this bigger. Okay. So I noticed this, this portion over here, and it kind of reminded me of bricks. So then I thought, okay, what am I going to do considering that I have um, this over here? I don't want to jump ahead. Okay. So since I have this, this color palette over here, right? What, what do you, what, what should I do um, in, in using these colors and, and that shawl? So I was thinking about it and I basically decided that it looked like the yellow, like it looked like the brick, like bricks, right? But I thought it would be cool to turn it into like yellow, the yellow bricks um, from, from the Wizard of Oz. And if I approach this project with the idea that um, I was going to make each of the yarns in the shawl a character or some component of the movie The Wizard of Oz. Okay, so now it just went from I like pretty fiber, I'm going to spin it, and I like this pattern, so I'm going to knit it to Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I can't wait to start this. I really have to wait until tonight to talk to you guys about it because I just want to get going. So um, you know, I was just like, man, this is going to be so exciting. So I started to then look for visual references of movie posters and, and things like that. So I'm going to switch back so you can see how, how else I've, I've done this. So I'm going to go now. So now I have a new tab here. I call it photo reference. And so I found this poster that I really, you know, liked the, the colors of, the design of, and I thought, cool, like I can pull different components from this movie poster, but also in my brain, you know, my own personal opinion and thoughts of, of what the movie is about. Now, I was speaking with Sharon about this, and I think that it's really um, a awesome, an awesome thing. If you go to Google and you type in, um, I think it's called movie barcode, movie barcodes, check this out. They, they have a, a place where they've taken basically a single cell from every movie and like smushed them together. And so it's almost like the color palettes from the, the movie, right? Like the overall colors used in the movie now can become a color palette that you can convert into a yarn, a project or whatever. And so like one of them, for example, was Harry Potter. And so it was very um, brown and, you know, very dark, right? So but you can see that there's like tons of different um, movie barcodes. So I just thought that that was a really fun idea to, to start with. And oh, my bad, I was on the wrong one. So, okay, hang on, let me show you. I thought I was on the screen share one. I apologize, you guys, hang on, one second. I'm still, I'm still trying to figure all of this out, okay. Here we go. I was like, why is nobody saying anything? <laughs> The beauty of technology, right? So yeah, so over here um, are all the different colors that 
you know, different movies have from when they got squished, squished together. Um, so yeah, so, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to think about how can I translate each character into a type of yarn, okay? So I'm going to go back to my, my screen over here. And I did a little brainstorm of all the characters. And then I came up with different materials that I might use for the, um, the characters. So for example, um, for the Wicked Witch, I thought it might be fun to use a black garbage bag and, and make it so that, you know, um, it's kind of like shiny and cut it into strips and, and have like a little novelty yarn. And I'm not really concerned so much with um, the, the, the yarn type that I'm gonna spin right now. Now it's just more of like the, the creation, the brainstorming, getting excited and, you know, just kind of coming up with ideas, okay? So for example, I thought about for the scarecrow, right? that it would be really cool if I took some flax and I spun that and then maybe I plied it with some denim strips of fabric or maybe, you know, I carded blue cotton and then I did a blend with flax. So now it's gonna be a blue cotton flax blend. Um, so there's really so many different potentials. And so as part of this Ask Lana About, um, I figured for each of the yarns, I would have a different session. And so I would talk to you about how I prepare them, how I spun them, and, you know, why did I make the choices that I made as I did each yarn. But it's getting me excited because now, again, I'm not spinning like bags and bags, you know, pounds and pounds of, of brown wool, um, you know, and, and doing the same thing. But each component and each part of it is, is really interesting and, and really exciting to me. So that's kind of how I put this idea board together. And, um, okay. So yeah, so if you can't see what's going on in my, in my Google Sheets, I'm just talking to you about my idea. Um, if there's something specific that you wanna see, cause I don't know if I can make it um, that much larger, but basically over here in this column, it says the, the elements of yarns that I wanna have. So like the scarecrow, and then over here are my yarn ideas. So if you wanna see this more, I guess, like in focus, um, then you can certainly, like I said, I have my, my creating a digital design notebook and then it shows how to lay everything out. So I'm just really more just sharing with you um, the, the process of, of how I'm beginning a project, okay? But basically I have the different characters over here. Oh, my bad, okay. Thank you guys, just, just um, give me a shout out if you're not, if you're not seeing it because I have different screens open. So hopefully you can see that. So thank you, thank you for that. Um, so yeah, so hopefully you can see here now. Let me just go and check, right? Okay. So you can see over here that it is the, the elements of the different, the different characters. So like for the tornado, for example, I thought it would be fun to maybe use um, a mohair and then do like a, an auto wrap yarn just because it has a very spirally, swirly effect to it, right? So this is, this is more of me thinking out loud, if you will, not necessarily actually executing anything. It's just purely where I'm brainstorming and coming up. Now I do have other tabs. So I have a pattern and yarn tab. So I've looked up what did the designer and the yarn manufacturer um, have, you know, as far as like the, the details and the, um, the components in their, in their shawl. So like this one, I know that I need to have seven different colors, I might make it 10 colors, I might make it 12, you know, so I'm just going to have that freedom um, to kind of just bounce around and, and just try different things. So yeah, so Allison said she, she's brainstorming now and, and that it's good inspiration. And I'm, I'm so happy because, like I said, you know, we can sit down, we can get into these spinning, spinning ruts where we don't know what to spin, you know, we want to do fun things, but we're not sure how, so we just stick with like you know, all of the vanilla basics. And I think this is a really fun way that you can jump into your stash and um, basically just, you know, go crazy with it. So if you are on Instagram, I don't know if um, people in this group would enjoy doing a spin along and everybody picks a movie and, you know, we tag the, you know, put the little hashtag like ask the lawn about so, so other people could join us. I think that would be a really fun thing. Um, but yeah, any ideas and, um, comments that, that you have about this, this process, I'm totally open to. 
Okay. So the next tab over here, this is the part that's really awesome. This over here, it says pattern sketch. So I found two patterns on Ravelry. And just give me a second, I wanna make sure you guys can still my, see my screen. Okay, so over here I have two patterns that I found. And um, what I did was I have links to them, okay? And so I can just go again and, and click on it. And that's how I was able to get that resource to, to open, well, before, okay, over here to open really quickly um, because I already had it saved as a link. And that's why I like this digital format of keeping all of my notes together because I feel like, you know, wherever I'm at, I could be at the yarn store, I could be, you know, um, at a fiber festival, and I'm, I'm already having all of these ideas for projects kind of in one place. And I don't necessarily have to buy everything, which is not to say I don't wanna support fiber, you know, dyers and yarn dyers, but the idea you could take a picture with your camera, you can take a picture of all of the details in it, right? Like. The, the fiber contents, the yardage, all of that. And you can start to kind of collect your ideas and pull them into one space. And then once you have, you know, something in mind that you want to do, you already have all of the resources and everything to go. So it's not like you're doing impulse buying. Um, and then you have stuff in drawers that you're not spinning. You know, you have things that you're not using, um, but that you actually can like go out and, and shop with wild abandon because now you have these great ideas to just jump right in. And so part of me is trying to spin my stash down um, because I went early on, I just bought things that I thought were really pretty. But now if I you know, want to get flax to, to make my scarecrow yarn, I can just go to, to a vendor that I know that has it and just and, um, use it when it's fresh, you know, as opposed to having stuff sitting in drawers and potentially getting felted and, and matted and, and whatnot. So that's just, um, you know, how, how, how I would approach it. Okay, so there was a question, what comes first? Did I start saving pictures of fiber first or was it the movie? So for me, um, in this instance, I started with looking at Stephen West patterns on Instagram and thinking, wow, this would be so much fun, but I don't really know how I would want to approach it, right? So it kind of was like rumbling around in the back of my head. And then I thought, well, I'm going to be doing this project, you know, ask the mom about, and I really want to um, find something that is going to be creative. So it's not, again, just like a, a one plus one equals two and a very um, straightforward thing. I want, to, I want to have some creativity, some, some artistic expression in it. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to need fiber. Let me, let me put together the things that really get me excited about spinning, seeing you know, bats that other um, vendors have made, you know, color schemes that other dyers have used. And so I might go and dye some yarns for this project too. There's no right or wrong way to start. Um, sometimes we get inspired by the fiber. You know, I knew that I had those pictures saved for years. I just didn't know what or where, like the Fat Cats one and the um, Pigeon Loop Studios one. So I'm gonna switch back so you can see. So these ones over here, Right, these are from when I first started spinning. I started saving these, but when I saw Mary's bats, um, it kind of triggered my whole love of, of green and red. So just the idea that, you know, you can start anywhere, but I think having a place where you can put all of your inspiration and then kind of pick and choose, you know, just kind of, like I said, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to make chicken and dumplings, I might really love using salt. So I already have that in the kitchen, I'm, I'm good, right? But I may not have the chicken and the biscuit ingredients, so then I'll go pull those together, you know? But um, if, I, if I kind of know where everything is to start, then that's going to give me a good, um, a good beginning, if, if you will, okay? So um, that, that was that part, but what I wanted to show you specifically is when you start with patterns that other people created, I really like the picture on the left, and I just wanna make sure you guys are still seeing my computer, okay. So I really like the picture on the left. However, it's not colors that, that I would use. So what I did was I go um, to this place over here, it's called pixelr.com, it's free. So if you have Photoshop, if you have any photo editing software, you know, obviously use that. But what I did was I saved um, the picture, so I did a screenshot of the shawl, and then 
I'll turn them into black and white mode. So see, right now, it is in color. There's some, there's some color elements there. So I open up the picture, and then I will go to the color adjusting um, part here. And then for saturation, I'll bring that all the way down. So now my picture is in black and white mode, OK? Now, depending upon what you're using um, and whatever app you're comfortable with, um, so like over here, let's say I want to use the colors from my project. So check this out. I'm going to go to Ask Alana, right? I'm going to go to the fiber reference. Now, do you see here I have these hex color codes? So they correspond to the color here. Now, let's say I want to paint this black and white shawl with this color. I'm going to copy that number there, the, the um, pound 61C2B3. Now, check this out. So I'm going to go to this over here, and I can input that hex color code. Oh, and it pops up right there. Now, I can take a paintbrush, and I can go over. Now, I'm completely covering that stitch, OK? So that's not good. Um, so I might set the transparency down to like 30%. And maybe I make it a little bit bigger. But now I can go and color over that section. And I can say to myself, OK, that's where I want a certain color to go, right? Now, for myself, I've, I've done this already. Uh, I use this as well as Procreate. So when I go to Pattern Sketch, you can see that using this image, I've created this sketch. And then using this image, the black and white one, I've created this one. And so in my mind, as I was um, coloring it in, I was trying to think about which character is going to be um, you know, good to use in which space. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that hopefully you can see it. So I'm just going to enlarge it a bit. OK. So you know, I was thinking like over here, um, for this specific row, it would be kind of cool to make that be the field of poppies. So I could have um, you know, a red single and a green single, and I could have them ply together. Or I could do an all green yarn and then maybe once in a while throw in a red bead, you know? So it's just kind of a, I don't know, a fun thing, I think, to, to be able to draw it out and see where the colors are going to go and how it's going to look. Because there's nothing worse, and I have so many of these, there is nothing worse than making a project, putting all of this time, all of this love into it, and then having it sit in the bin, okay? So I just, I'm going to show you what this bin of mine looks like. <laughs> so this bin over here is everything that I made that I don't wear for one reason or another. Um, but probably more, more often than not, it's just not colors that I would wear. Now this one is one that I think is kind of a cool, a cool project. Um, and I do wear this when it, when it gets really cold. This was a novelty yarn that um, a friend of mine had spun. So if you've heard of her, Studio Lou, she's in Canada. And I bought the yarn when I went to Twist. And if you can see here, let me get this little guy. You can see there is a little, whew, there's a little garden gnome. OK, he's hanging out in the yarn. And the way she spun it and the way she um, put it into, into the yarn, it wasn't in the place where I wanted it to go. Like, I wanted it to be in certain strategic locations. So I just cut the yarn up. And I, I cut the little gnome off. And now, when I made it, so hang on. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I have buttonholes. OK, so there's like a buttonhole over here. And so I moved the little garden gnome so that now he becomes a button. And he keeps it nice and secure. And then his other little friend does as well. Okay, so I have these two, these two buttons here. And so, like, I love this so much because I thought about it before I, I knitted it. Now, I didn't spin the yarn, and I loved the yarn, and I thought it was awesome, but I, I allowed myself to kind of think about what did I want it to be, and how could I best execute it. And so having that, um, I guess, like, final goal or final project in mind, knowing that I would wear it, it really makes me enjoy the things that I make. And of course, you can make things for other people. But when I'm making something specifically for myself, now I'm thinking, OK, I don't want it to just be fun to spin. I want to make sure that I'm going to really wear this. And it's not going to go into my plastic bin of, of workshop samples that, that I share with people, um, but that it's going to actually be functional. OK, so 
we are out of time for tonight, but I want to make sure um, I pretty much went over everything that I wanted to. I didn't really go over um, the materials needed, so we can start there next time. But I really appreciate all of you for coming out and joining me this evening. And I do have a link that I'm going to put in the comments. So if you can just hang around um, and click on that link to fill out a form just to give me your feedback, how you thought the events um, went tonight, how the information was presented, the format, the format of having it in, um, in Zoom as opposed to, to somewhere else, all, all of the things that you can give me feedback on, I would really appreciate it. And I hope that you got something out of this. So in this day and age, um, I'm really bummed that I can't go to in-person workshops and this kind of dialogue and um, interaction with people is something that I really miss, but it's, it's one of the things that I love um, doing as far as like an instructor and a fiber artist is to have this conversation and, and dialogue with people to get people excited. And so um, I know that financially it's kind of difficult for a lot of people, so I wanted to make this first session free. Um, the next session, it's going to be five dollars. However, um, I know that in the fiber art community, word of mouth is super powerful. And I always try to put forth a good product in hopes that someone is gonna tell their friend about it. So what I was gonna um, say is that if you know someone that might be interested in watching this video after it's posted and joining the project and, and watching future sessions with us, if you get um, two people to join, join me and, and join on for the, the next session, under the comments if they write your email address or your name i will give you a free invitation to the next session okay so i hope that this was informative and that um you know you all got a little something out of it no matter where you're at on on your own fiber journey and like i said i'm going to go now and grab the link so give me one second and then i'll go back and i'll read any comments so i should have that over here okay and um, I had it open and then it got closed. So if you can just be patient with me for one second, I will post the link. And also um, while, while I'm getting the link to let you know too that I anticipate doing this project from beginning to finish. However, um, when I'm done, I might do something different. So instead of doing spinning and knitting, I might do, um, I don't know, something on like drawing or um, embroidery or something different. So I promise that there's going to be lots of different um, projects and, and different ideas that I can do. So over here, I'm going to paste the link. Okay. So whoop, my bad, that went to Lisa. Hang on. I wanted to go to everyone. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there's there's the link. Um, and if you can just go please and fill that out for me, I would be really super appreciative um, to just get your feedback on the whole process. And like I said, I'm going to be doing the next one is going to be June 2nd at 8pm. And so I'll have it set up in a similar way. I'll take all of your feedback into consideration. I'll respond to, to you for, for giving me your time. I do appreciate it. You know, the first, the first time we do anything, it's a little bit nerve wracking, right? But um, I, I really am very um, appreciative for your time. So thank you, everyone. Um, I'm just going to go through the comments right now and see if there are any, you know, questions. Um, but I will hopefully, fingers crossed, see you next time. So thank you and, and take care.